Hey, we're right back with another video. It's a little bit after 8 o'clock, and um, it's getting dark. And I'm just kicking back here, getting ready for bed. I just took a shower, washed my hair, and uh, I braided it up in a bunch of little braids right now because my hair is air drying before I actually straighten it tomorrow, which is a, it's a big mess right now. Anyway, but it feels good to be clean. But anyway, I was um, thinking about, um, I wanted to make a video about innocent bystanders, so-called innocent bystanders. And oftentimes, um, you know, people know what is going on in a person's life, um, the drama that's surrounding this person. And um, they are accusing a person of things that they didn't do because they're associated with a group of people. But please understand that people aren't innocent until they're proven guilty. And in situations relating to workplace mobbing and um, community or harassment, it's almost like you're guilty until you're proven innocent. And that's a really bad situation to be in. But hopefully, I'm hoping that people will start waking up to this, um, this evil nightmare and start helping, you know, um, and realizing that in, in, in the today's world, anybody can be in this situation. And I do understand the so-called innocent bystander situation because um, they must realize that, you know, to go against something of this magnitude, that they might find themselves in a situation very similar. But there's ways that you can um, inform a target that of what's going on in an anonymous way, you know, whether that be through like slipping a note in their mailbox, a note under their um, on their car, um, under their doormat, or some way of notifying them, calling them from a payphone or whatever. It, it's very important that you let people know what is going on. Um, you know, I, I would have it would have been very helpful to me if somebody would have let me know. Um, what exactly was happening to me um, during this time. All these years, and you know, all this time has gone by, and, um, and um, but, but I understand where they're coming from, but at the same time, it's like, you know, um, hopefully this has opened up people's eyes to the situation. When it comes to workplace, you know, I'm hoping that enough employers will understand um, that this is a very severe issue and it's affecting a lot of people and many people are being targeted um, where they need their financial security, they need to be protected and um, employers are making big mistakes and, 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 and trampling over the lives of very many, many people. So let's just say for example you work in an office environment and you see somebody in a position where they're participating in this sort of thing. I think this, and you know, hopefully you could get information pamphlets, and um, there's some information that I put on a video just recently, so that people can be aware of, of this, um, of what this is. Not only does it hurt the, the company, but you're actually damaging the life of another person. So really this sort of stuff, and hopefully people in management and business owners will take this sort of thing seriously. And these people should be immediately terminated from their positions. They should lose their jobs immediately because understanding what this is and what they're um, what they're associating it with, and it's relating to that part of the company. They shouldn't be in those positions, and they should be fired on the spot because this sort this sort of thing should not be taken lightly in any way, shape, or form. Um, you know, as far as employers are concerned, like for example, a family member calls in and, um, you know, wants to, you know, start creating social dramas within the workplace, um, employers should be able to recognize that this is a form of, what they call it, some company handbooks refer to it as horseplay or whatever, that this kind of horseplay always results in something bad. And it shouldn't, outside sources should not be able to affect what goes on inside the workplace. So people on the telephone should be able to say, I'm sorry, you know, we can't, can't, we can't do that. Or, you know, if you want to talk to so-and-so, talk to them after work or call them on their cell phone. This sort of stuff should never, ever take place in the workplace, ever. Um, and um, 
not just because of the target, but the liability that it, that it puts on a company. I mean, the people who participated in this are a liability to their company, period. They are, okay? They're opening up their company to a lawsuit. And what's shocking about it is, like, there was a person who did a video today about how, um, how when you're a target, you can basically get terminated for anything, okay? Because they don't like your shoes. Because whatever, and these people are participating in a, in a program that is a pro, that is um, that is a form of <laughs> genocide, basically, and that they continue to have their jobs. It's very eye-opening, okay. And a lot of people don't realize what it is, and that's my purpose. My purpose is to inform employers um, of this, as well as people outside the community. Um, you know, people, family members um, should keep their assumptions and their opinions to themselves. They shouldn't be, you know, um, releasing these sort of things out in the public, okay? Especially on social media. And employers shouldn't really be putting a lot of weight on what they see on Facebook. They really shouldn't. Um, you know, in my ideal world, LinkedIn would be a real networking system, a real functioning networking system, not just a, um, I don't know what LinkedIn is for, really, at this point, okay? I think the idea behind it is supposed to be uh, a real functioning networking system. Unfortunately, that's not what it's become, okay? Um, Facebook and LinkedIn are two separate things, okay? Um, Facebook is for your social activities, or it could be like related to special, specific groups, people that you have things in common with, or people that you used to know or whatever. It's a social gathering, okay? Think of it as a na big neighborhood, a big giant world neighborhood where you can talk to people that you have things in common with or just test base with people that you used to know. LinkedIn is supposed to be a very serious, professional website. It's supposed to be able you know, to talk about your skills, contact employers, meet other people who might need your skills, and then you can move on from there. But unfortunately, you know, the world isn't the way it's supposed to be, okay? Because that's what they're supposed to be used for. And um, it, it's not me harping and trying to belittle people. It's only be, and it's not that I don't like having fun, because I do. I have, you know, I'm a very fun, loving person, okay? But I'm looking at my situation and I'm looking at other targeted, targeted individual situations, and it's a nightmare. It's a nightmare. This whole thing is gone throughout the country and it proves a huge point that you know um, that we need better workers <laughs> we need better workers we need some sort of um, improvement when it comes to the workplace because th this isn't this isn't working okay it, there's so much dysfunction and so if you see this sort of thing going on in your workplace if you know a person who is sabotaging somebody, if you know somebody who is blacklisting somebody, if you know somebody who is, um, um, you know, like I mentioned, the three ladies who um, participated, I'm talking about Joanna, Jennifer, Selena, and Mary, these, two, these kind of people, this sort of stuff, if you know this sort of stuff is going on in a company, they need to be reported. They should be reported immediately, you know, and unfortunately, their immediate supervisors are foolish enough to participate in this, and guess what, you're opening yourself up to a lawsuit, okay? Um, it's a very serious issue, okay? And it's breaking every single law that is under the book. And, um, and I'm the one who's being affected by it. So like, I know that a lot of people resent my, um, my speaking up about it, but the thing is, what would happen if I had remained quiet about it? What would have, because I really thought that because I upheld the confidentiality contract at the Maurice place, that things were going to be fine. I was going to be able to get on with my life because I thought that was issue was that issue. But it wasn't, okay? It was this weird shit that was going on in people's minds and I was being affected by it, okay? So then it got to the point where I had to say something. So my expressing, expressing my concerns, there's, um, it's, it's, a, it's a legitimate concern. You know, obviously, when I'm sitting here trying to scramble to pay my bills, when I'm asking my son to pay my bills, you know, when I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to scrape together rent money and how am I going to be able to eat, that is a very serious issue, okay? Um, and then I'm not sure exactly what's going to happen to me at this point. It is a very serious issue. 
so for you know so for people to say well you know don't you, you need to calm down and just relax or or you know you're just going overboard I'm not going overboard I'm not going overboard at all <laughs> I am not um, and also you know of course you know keeping family issues needs to stay within the family work issues should stay within the work you know um, sector and and that should be the way it is you know, and that's not to say you can't refer to somebody, somebody a job, or you can't arrange a job or whatever. But people have to work in an ethical manner to where they 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 don't sit here and attack other people. You know what I mean? Especially on things that are based on rumor. Everybody knows. I think I think I remember when I was a kid, I had you know lessons on gossip and how it could evolve into something that's completely wrong. And this is completely wrong. This is all the way around the world wrong. You know, and so. Um, people need to watch what they say <laughs> and they need to think about, you know, the, the realistic, um, uh, scenario. It was that even realistic. I mean, none of it was realistic. None of it was even, even played out, you know, except for me contacting Wiles back in 2008. That's the extent of it. That's it. There is nothing else to say to this story. You know, and so, of course, my brain's going to unravel a, a lot because, you know, I'm sitting here wondering what's going to happen to me next. You know, I'm sitting here, you know, literally, my life is literally dangling on a thread. <laughs> and um, I, 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 um, I can't help but express that, you know. So my point is, is that, um, you know, people need to get involved and start recognizing what this is. It is not um, a professional thing to do. It is not a neighborly thing to do. It is not, um, uh, if you care about your family, it, it, it's not an expression of love. If you want to scapegoat your family, keep your scapegoating to yourself, okay? But at least understand that this person has a right to go on and live their life, is basically what I'm saying. Um, I, I'm hoping that that my videos have helped somebody in some way. Um, I, I really am. I'm really hoping that it has. Because um, this is a um, this is a very very um, taxing program, and it's um, and it's one that you know I, I, I live with on a twenty four hour day basis. So anyway, if I can help just one person, then I guess it would be well worth it. I'm gonna wrap up this video. I'll be back with one in the morning. Have a good night.